All right, so now I'm going to use the quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to make a red with this. So this is fascinating. So in order to make red with this magenta, what I need to do is add the tiniest touch of yellow. And when these two combine, red. How's that? Okay, I've added white to my quinacridone magenta and yellow mix. And also, look, now a tiny touch of this other colour that I mixed previously, the thallo green with the white, and that's just making that pink look a little bit less unnatural, just giving it a slightly blue shade makes it look a little bit more human, less like candy floss. Still using a big brush. And that pink is not white enough, you know, it's still not pale enough. That's the thing with your acrylics, the colour you put on, it's always darker than you imagine it's going to be. So, I find you need to use twice as much yellow as you do any of the other colours and twice as much white as you do yellow. So, I think that might need to lighten just a little bit more as it will darken. So I'm dipping my brush straight into this because it's so much fun. I'm just putting pure pigment. Look, this is, uh, I'm not mixing a red this time. This is a cadmium red. You're not painting by numbers, so you don't have to push your color right up to the edges. You know, that yellow, which is just now creeping under the other colors, look. It's looking so good, I don't want to obliterate it all. What you begin to learn is when you paint is that it's all about where one colour meets another. It's all about the boundary between one colour and the one next to it. That's where the action is. My idea for the fabric comes from another sketch I did using a different model on a different day. Another good reason for having lots and lots of source material. And notice that at no time does my brush go anywhere near the water. You end up with ins insipid, milky looking colours if you use water. So I've balanced all my colours, I think. You'll see now that I've got a patch of blue down here. And that is balanced with a patch of blue up here. So what I'm trying to do is to create an equilibrium right the way across the picture space. And I think that this strong red up here counters these black stripes quite nicely down here. So the whole thing is now in a state of equilibrium, I hope. All right. These are formal things. These are formal arrangements, nothing to do with reality and everything to do with what makes your picture work. So now while the black paint is still wet because I've used a slow drying acrylic here, I'm going to scratch out some detail using uh, a palette knife. So here we go. I 
scratch through the black paint to reveal the blue underneath. I enjoy doing that so much I want to find somewhere else to do it, but I can't. There's nowhere else, is there? Oh, down here. Oh, is that? Can you hear that washing machine? <laughs> so, so now, the scariest, most important part of all, the line work. I need to produce a line that is as careless and as perfectly placed as Matisse is, so no pressure there then. So it's got to be a line that comes and goes. Uh, if it's a relentless, heavy, thick line around the whole subject, it will look like a stained glass window and I don't want that. I want it to be vivacity in the finished work. You have the colour and the spaces, that's very important, but also he was very interested in the arabesque shape, this interlacing, scrolling, tendril-like curve, which should imbue life and humanity into the finished thing. Well, we'll see, won't we? I got my dishcloth handy, so if I make a mistake with the line, I can wipe it off. My security dishcloth. Pressure. No pressure. Oh, I don't like that line at all. Recharge the brush. So I'm putting pressure on the brush and taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, go around the shape. And now when it comes to the features, then we want to just, simple line there, do that line, and the brow again, the eyebrow again, and the eyes slightly slanted. And then just a little go in the hair. There. Got to stop there. I didn't stop there, of course. I'd put the painting out of sight for a few days so I could return to it with a fresh eye. Then I adjusted the line, popped a little red into the bottom right corner, varied the flesh tones and highlighted the pink with a complementary lime green. There are no shadows in Matisse's world. Only colour. Colour, he said, that exists in itself, possessing its own beauty. Thanks for watching.